so hey family, here we are with Bradford Kaufman. Um, told you today we would be interviewing him. He is a premier luxury agent here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And by the way, we are in a badass loft in downtown Dallas. Um, it's actually a penthouse loft. And so we'll be showing you guys that here shortly. But just wanna chat briefly um, all about luxury. I've had tons of you guys in my DMs. Um, I've had you you know, calling, asking questions about how you break into luxury. What does it look like? What does the marketing look like? How can I get luxury clients? And Brad Bradford is our guy. So we're just gonna speak candidly to you guys about how to kind of break into it, things to consider, uh, because oftentimes you think you wanna break into it, but then once you know what's really going on. So, uh, didn't I recruit you? Um, I believe you just told, um, I think you told the broker at the time, the acting broker at the time, to you better go after this guy. Yes, yes. So, but, but, but it started with the real estate school. So, guys. Oh my God, it did. Yes. Yes, I forgot about that portion. Yes. yes it did. So, um, one of the brokerages that I worked for many years ago, um, I, he, I don't know. I guess he liked me a lot. He he wanted me to go to well, the real estate not schools. To like? I mean, come Something on. Like. <laughs> so I went to the real estate schools to actually talk to them about our brokerage. And Bradford, you were like on your last class. Last I think. class, yeah. And I came in and I talked and I recruited you. You did, yeah. <laughs> that is exactly the way it happened. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I I honestly forgot that part because that was so long ago. <laughs> but yeah, I do remember. So that. I recruited him, and then when he joined, um, I remembered. You know, seeing him because you can't tell right now. How tall are you? Uh, six five, six six. So Bradford is a big, tall man, and so when he came into the brokerage, I was like, I remember this guy. So long story short, we hit it off. We started talking. Um, I kind of like worked with him a little bit, showed him what I was doing, and we just became friends. And um, just want to take you guys kind of through his journey and, and even through our journey because we haven't seen each other in what like. It's been a while. A year or two? Yeah. It's been a while. Too um, long. Too, way too We're long. We're due for some ramen. We are due for some ramen. Yeah. <laughs> and so just want to take you guys kind of through this journey of, you know, connecting with agents that are outside of your brokerage, um, connecting with people that are really good at their craft, which that is going to be Bradford, and then how you guys can get into luxury. So so let's fast forward. We had a horrible experience at the brokerage that I recruited him to. We're not going to talk about that because it's not worthy of our time. No. no <laughs> it's not needed. <laughs> but we then both decided to split. We were like, we're out of this yeah. place. We're going to leave. So I left, started my own brokerage. And so then that's when you really got into luxury. So talk a little bit about like how you ended up in the luxury space, why you kind of chose the brokerage that you did and like the different things that you did to break into that. Yeah, I, I want to preface all this by saying like, I'm going to be really candid and, um, and non-scripted. This is just us just talking and and the way that I looked at luxury real estate was I knew that I, I always thought that you had to be at a certain brand. I thought you always had to be at a certain brokerage. Like the only people that you were ever going to, the only, only, the only part of luxury that you were able to truly break into is if you were at a, at a premier broker. Right. So I headhunted brokers um, and luckily I got, um, I got brought on at Sotheby's um, and and from there I just I knew that I had to connect and get on the ground and and work my ass off okay so so you left the brokerage you landed at Sotheby's 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 yeah. because see I don't even know how to say it that's how unfancy I am right um, but you you landed there because you felt like you needed to be with with a premier brand in order to kind of really break into luxury right. but what were some things so so now you're at this luxury brokerage you're around all of these agents that sell right. three four five ten million dollar properties um, what were some things that you did in the beginning to like get comfortable with that or like like how did you know who to talk to like it's it's not like cold calling yeah, a three hundred thousand yeah. dollar house like what do you do to get those people well, honestly, I think you have to live in their space. You have to do what they do. You have to want to authentically be yourself while also connecting with people that are, are of high net worth. And I think by doing that, you, your chances greatly go up. Um, and in, that, in the same kind of token, you need to make sure that everything that you do is done with a little bit of grace and a little bit of elegance, I think. Right. And you have to know, you have to just figure out what they like, why they like it, and, and then 
do those things. So that's what I did. I mean, I just, I, I worked my ass off, as you know, I was, even when we worked together for the short period of time, I mean, I was the last one to leave the office. And the first one there. And the first one there. Every day. Every day. Um, and I had to make those connections. I'm from East Texas, Northeast Oklahoma, Southeast Oklahoma, Northeast Texas, like on the border. I had no connections here in Dallas. Like I, these are all genuine connections that I made. I built my book of business by being authentically true to myself while also pushing myself outside of my comfort zone. Right. And whenever I did that, I felt that people automatically gravitated towards me because I think people in the luxury space tend to be a bit stuffy. And <laughs> they, te they tend to be not relatable. Right. They, and then I think whenever I came in, I was a younger guy that was hungry. A lot of the buyers and sellers that I came in contact with, they knew that and they could feel that. And they knew that I didn't have a huge book of business and that I was there, I was gonna focus entirely on their property. Right. And by doing so, I just slowly built my book of business. And I can share with you the first- Yeah, my, like share my, with me like your first- My like, first big luxury experience. Book. Yes, let's do that. So I didn't know, I mean, I was, I was struggling. Like I went from making, I was in the finance world before real estate and I, <laughs> I didn't know, I mean, I had family, I grew up in real estate, but I was that child that just like, I'm not doing what my entire family is doing. Like, that's just a no for me. Right. Um, so I went and created my own path and then I realized like, no, actually I am gonna do real estate. I went and got my real estate license and finished it in what, three weeks or something? Yeah, that's Like, cool. I did, did it really quickly and, and um, anyways, I um, was at this, the bar, this, actually I'll tell you what bar is Rattlesnake Bar and Ritz Carlton. <laughs> and I was just- so, so wait, stop there, stop there. So, do you see where he was? He put himself in an environment of where your perfect client lied. Okay, so, so, so I, wanna, I wanna just say that before he continues on. Guys, the trick to all of this, regardless of who you wanna work with, you wanna work with first time home buyers, you wanna work with, with you know, elderly people, you wanna work with luxury market. Um, it, it's some fundamentals that you have to do when yeah. building out that marketing, yeah. which is number one, you need to build out your perfect client. Right. Who is it? Um, and specifically, what are some things about them? Um, and, and I drill it down really, really specifically. Are they married? Are they single? How much money do they have in the bank? What's their credit score? Right. What's their ethnicity? What's their political affiliation? What's right. their religious affiliation? Because ultimately, if you're marketing to everyone, you're marketing to no one. Yeah. Um, and then I drill down a list of where do they go? What do they like? And what problems do they have? Mm -hmm. And I build my marketing around that. You have to. And because you have if you to. don't, if you, if you can't envision your client and what that looks like and who that is, I mean, it's not like there's someone just going to naturally gravitate right. to you. You have to <laughs> right. create that vision yourself. So then you go to the Ritz Carlton. And I sit at the bar <laughs> and I don't even drink. I had some sort of like, I don't know, I had diet Coke or something, <laughs> but I act like I was drinking a crown and Coke probably. Right. I don't know. Like, <laughs> um, and I was sitting there and I overheard a conversation behind me um, of this man's assistant and he was a brain surgeon. and. He was assistant to this brain surgeon, and I just heard him talking about how, yeah, we need to get your home sold. I know your, you know, your, fin your financial planner is telling you that you need to sell your second property. Da da da. And I just overheard this conversation, and I simply, whenever I felt the time was right and the timing was perfect, as soon as he hung up the phone, I just stood up and I said, um, "Here's my card. I'm sorry I, I, I intruded on your conversation, but I just." Here's my card. Right. Call me. And I left. Never heard from him, of course. <laughs> but then I overheard him say goodbye to the brain surgeon. I'm not gonna say his name, I can't say his name. Right. But so then I looked him up on I did some stalking. So you were a creeper? So I was a hardcore <laughs> creeper. I looked him up online and I found out where his office was. And so I mailed him a letter, didn't get a response. I handwritten another letter, didn't get a response. Um, and then I called and I asked to speak with him and I don't know how the hell you they made, it through. Me, made me through. I didn't even <laughs> act like I was a patient or nothing, but they just said, oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Like he just so happened to be around the desk and I told him that he needed to use me to sell his home and I'm with Sotheby's. 
Oh wow. And he said, I well, didn't funny. even know this story. He said, funny, he said, funny that you call me. I'm interviewing two other agents um, at two different brokerages, and I was actually looking for a Sotheby's agent to, to call, and I was going to call Sotheby's tomorrow. How cool is that? And I went up against two other agents that are very well known in the luxury space um, in an interview process, and um, he liked my hunger, he liked my grit. He liked what I said and just lucked out and got the, uh, got the opportunity to sell. And my motto is, and I've always thought this, is like, it only takes one. It only takes one. And then you have your confidence, right? Like It only takes one person mm -hmm. and one client to change your entire trajectory of your career. Absolutely. And I believe that. I 110% believe that because I mean, from that, then you, you learn. You market the hell out of it. Right. And you blow everybody's marketing. You see, you look around that neighborhood and you see what they've done in their marketing and how much they probably have spent on their marketing. So then let's talk about that. So I am not a luxury agent at all. I am terrified of luxury. Um, Bradford knows even. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, she sends me sometimes. Like, yeah, like, yeah, like, like yeah, here, like, yeah. like I don't even know where to start with them. So I will tell you on just the regular, like my average price point is 330000 which is not luxury here in Dallas-Fort Worth. It's just normal. Um, and so with that, there isn't a lot of intricate marketing. Like right. you'll throw out a Facebook ad, you'll do tours, you do open houses and things like that. What does the marketing look like if you're selling a $3 million house? Well, you, that's the thing. It can be as much and as little as you want it to be, but you are selling yourself at the very front of this experience with this client. So you're, you're, you're selling what you're going to be doing for their property. And you have to, you have to fulfill those promises. Right. So if you tell them that you're going to be in the Wall Street Journal and Architectural Digest and all the neighborhood posts and all the neighborhood newspapers, um, or Paper City, or some of those luxury magazines that we have Literally here in, don't know in what Dallas, Paper City is. You, you've got to deliver. So sometimes before you even list the property, you could very well be ten to $15,000 spent on ads. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, that's before you even, and you don't even know if the Are you serious? You don't even know if you're gonna sell it. So, But so. you have to be so confident, that's why you have to be upfront with your client and don't just take a luxury listing that you know is overpriced. Right. Because you might be out 20 grand or 15 grand on marketing before you're even done. So it sounds to me though that a lot of luxury marketing is in publications. That's the thing. People think paper is dead, mm -hmm. not in the luxury space. Not in Dallas at least. It might be in New York, I don't know that market. It might right. be in LA, I don't know that market. But right. in Dallas, Paper, people are gonna get on their hangar, they're gonna go to Addison, they're gonna go to the private jet, they're gonna get on their jet, and there's gonna be publications everywhere that they're, they're gonna hand them magazines. And wealthy people read. Right, right. <laughs> like, they, they just they read, read. Right. and they, they, they look at magazines, and, and they, they, they like to feel something, they like to touch something, they like to, they like to understand that someone is spending money to do this. Okay. So, you have to, you have to expose their property to those high net worth people. And I've gotten phone calls from those ads, so they still work. Right, and it's interesting because I remember calling and asking you, I was like, like what is the difference really between you know, marketing on the luxury end versus regular? And you said something that, that really was like a light bulb moment for me, um, is that wealthy people tend to buy homes as an impulse buy. So as they're on their private jet flipping through these magazines and then they see a lovely house, then at that point they may call their assistant and say, hey, book a showing for this, right. rather than the family that's looking to buy a $400,000 house. Like, that are pressed to buy. They're pressed to buy. And they have to buy. Right. And they don't have no leverage. Right, right. Whereas like a luxury like property, people have time, time is money, and that equals to a very just candid impulse buy and just sometimes. I think I want it. I think this house fits my needs for Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's the truth. So, 
I feel like a lot of agents want luxury and want to be in luxury because the things that they see on TV, they see million dollar listing, they see yeah. selling sunset and all of these things. What are some common selling misconceptions? Sunset. I know it's trash. Um, what are some common misconceptions that you would throw out there or some things that agents should be aware of that they probably aren't when they're just seeing like the luxury side of things that are tough? I think the level of service that you have to understand to deliver to those clients is very comprehensive and you have to understand their world. Right. So if you don't understand their world, you're not going to be able to deliver service to them. Um, and if you don't fully dive into what they're about and who they are and, and who they vote for and what they like and, and what jet they own or whatever, like you have to understand and you have to speak their language. Right. And if you're not invested in knowing that, or if that's just not authentically what you like or enjoy, right. don't get in the space. That's not a space for that. you. Like that's not a space for you. I love that. Um, go sell half a million dollar houses, two hundred thousand dollar houses, and collect right. that check and, and turn over fine. and do. And that's fine. <laughs> I sell those. Right. I think selling luxury properties has helped me um, sell non-luxury properties, which I hate. We've talked about this earlier. Right. We hate the word. Like, luxury. what is a luxury property anyway? Like, yeah. Like, what does that mean? Like, an, a mean? luxury to me may not be the same as a luxury to someone on the street. Right. right. Like. Right. A luxury property to someone that has fifty million in the bank isn't a one point five million dollar home, right? right? Like right. it's it's a three point five million dollar home, right? But luxury to um, you know a normal family that's a teacher and and a, a doctor. A million know, dollars is luxury. A million dollars is luxury, right? Or even eight fifty. And even depending on what part of town you're in, absolutely. In Dallas, Fort Worth, you know there are many suburbs that a million dollars is like really and really then luxury. And you go to Highland Park, and there's four million dollar lots. <laughs> The land, right? The land for an so acre. it's all subjective. So. Like, like there is no number. You have to get familiar with your markets. But like he said, like you've got to be invested in understanding your client. It all goes back to what I just said. Yeah. Build out your perfect client. Right. Understand what they like, where they go, and what problems they have, and and really submerge yourself in that space. Surround right. yourself in their environment. Learn what they do. Learn what they like. Learn the problems that they have. Go to the places that they go. Like there really is no other secret sauce to it. Like I think the only secret sauce, and I think people have this or don't, okay. is the grace and okay. and how to be gracefully elegant. And I don't know that you learn that. I am not elegant or graceful. I disagree. You really? have your own way of appealing and which is grace to your audience. Right. Grace is also subjective. True. But grace to a $3 million client versus grace to a $300,000 client, it's still They're, grace. Right. You still have grace. Right. It's understanding the grace that you need in order to deliver the service that they expect. Right, right. And, and understanding those expectations, I think, is, is really big. It's the biggest obstacle. And if that's not something that, like, thrills you and because no, yeah sure you might get a hundred thousand dollar paycheck but what did it take to sell the property to right. get that hundred thousand dollar paycheck right and in that same in that same sense like how much energy did it take right how much and time money. did it take and and, and and just money and also like what if this doesn't sell what if this product so sell? how much money here's a question Ooh, how much money in the bank do you think an agent should have before they start going after luxury listings? Because I mean, from what I'm hearing you say, you can't really like market a $3 million house if you, you got $200 no, in the bank. You have no business even going to that listing appointment. If you do, and you do get it, and it's a friend or it's a family member or it was a referral and you have that rapport up front, then you just have to be very candid with them and, and, and be honest. Don't say that you have $200, $200 in the bank, <laughs> of course, but right. don't overpromise and underdeliver. That's right. the last thing you want to do. Right. And if you're with, because most people of this, of this amount of net worth are going to be very educated and they're going to be very knowledgeable of what they expect from their marketing right. person or their agent right. uh, and their broker to spend on their listing. And if they don't, if you don't uphold that, next. 
Right, right. And so it doesn't matter if you have a listing higher. agreement. Their attorney is going to be like, well, we're out anyway. Like, they're right. going to find a way out of a listing agreement. Right. You know, I mean, I'm not an attorney. I can't So speak you that, need to have some funds. You need to, you, I mean, you need to. Or under, resources. Understand that it's going it, to, it costs money to make money in any business. As, right. As we know, but you have to understand that you're going to be marketing at a whole Do different level. you see how level. he answered that so gracefully? And I'm like, you need some ducats in the bank. Because <laughs> if you don't have no coins. money, you need some coins, or else it's not going down. Um, let me see some other cool things um, before we wrap up. I guess do you have any like cool like I don't know interesting quirks and things that like are different with luxury than others? So like signing non disclosures or like how you can't necessarily talk about where you're going, like the secret society kind of of luxury. Yeah, there's. There's been more NDAs that I've signed that I can't share than not, honestly. Because once you enter the space, you you know, if it's a professional athlete, he has a teammate that's looking to buy as well, or if it's, you know, whomever, whatever that looks right. like. And you just have to sign a non-disclosure and your hands are tied behind your back. But um, the secret, there's no secret really besides the fact that you just it comes back to being yourself right like no one's going to connect with you if you're not a hundred percent like authentic to who you are and if that's not you then that's okay like there's, <laughs> right. a, there's a million other ways to make money like <laughs> right um right. and for for me like i think the thing that i like learned the most about entering the space is that you have to push yourself to get uncomfortable Mm -hmm. And you have to be the dumbest person in the room. Yeah, to you learn. You've got to accept right. that I'm going to be in the room with S a CEOs, CFOs. I'm going to be in the room with these people that are smarter than me, more than likely, on a lot of different fronts. They definitely probably have more money than you. And definitely <laughs> probably make more money than I do. Right. But it's, I've been, I've been, I think, been very blessed with understanding the problem before it arises right. and understanding the needs before it's needed. And they expect that. You gotta understand, they have, they're have four or five layers deep before you can talk to them from the, from the average person. They have the, their assistants have assistants. You right. Know, like, right. So it's like they, they expect people to problem solve. Right. And if you haven't sold a problem a property, how are you gonna problem solve? How are you gonna problem solve? So, it's 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 deep into it and you have to understand that like it takes it it's practice it's like everything else and confidence in yourself and understanding that if if this doesn't come natural to you it's really i think hard to learn i do too but you also have to understand that you it can be learned i think to a degree right but on that level i think the more repetitions, the better you get, but either you have it or you don't. No, I, I mean, that is a conversation that you and I always have. Always have. And I was always just like, no, like, I don't want to do a luxury. <laughs> yeah. I'm just not going to do it. Like, I don't, I don't wear Tom Ford. I don't, right. I don't even know these brands. I don't understand that life. Right. And I don't have any interest in yeah, it. Absolutely. And I was honest with myself about right. that. And I think that's what he's saying is, don't fall into this trap of um, seeing things on television and, and, and having commission breath and saying, I want to get a $100,000 commission. Like, shit, who doesn't, right? But, but if you yourself know that you can't comfortably be yourself and live in that space, um, then like sell houses that aren't in luxury and still make money. Right, um, it's, right. It's totally and then a thing. Just, and then you have quantity over quality or whatever Correct. you want to look Correct. at, however you want to look at it. Right. But... At the end of the day, like people only are gonna let you see what they want you to see. And I don't only sell three million dollar houses, of course. Right. Like I mean, I will sell anything and I, that's what I said earlier, is like I think being a luxury agent has given me the ability to serve my clients that are maybe at a lower price point. Even better. Uh, even better. Right. Because I understand what the best service and the level of service people ask for me is mm -hmm. and how rigorous and how intense and how, you know, just 
I mean, mad that that can be. Would you recommend new agents that want to kind of break into luxury that they actually like take classes at their local board association, get luxury certified, or is that just kind of like useless? I, I, I think that's useless. <laughs> you don't see any top agents that that's gonna that. that's gonna write you on their email signature with a I million different like. <laughs> That's just credentials behind their name. Right. Their name is going to be their brand. Right. And you're going to know that they sold. You don't have to. You don't have. They don't have to talk about that stuff. Right. Okay. Um, so really, it's just about submerging yourself in the space, surrounding yourself with the the right people. Surrounding yourself with the right people, and and truly investing into your personal growth and your personal development of what a premier agent and marketing person because you're a marketer just as you which as much oh, as you yeah. are as an agent right, right? i mean right. we all both i mean this is what yeah. we do right and you have to understand that you have to be the sharpest person agent that they interview because they're going to interview agents oh yeah it's and not you, like it's not like you just go get the job right and and you have to be the sharpest person that shows up to the interview and you have to be excited about the opportunity and it's not like you just go put a sign in the yard. No. I mean, there's, I could go over a million different variables and I'm kind of going all over the place because there's no one specific secret. Right. It's right. like this culmination. Whenever I first got in the business, let's back up for a minute. Okay. Whenever I first got in the business, I had a mentor. And Chauncey and I worked together and I learned a lot from Chauncey at the very beginning. And then I broke into the luxury sector and i had nothing for him <laughs> and, and she was like well this is this the 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 <laughs> the place you belong so go do your thing i'm gonna watch you rise to the top and i was like well that's very kind of you i don't know we'll see and, but i did have confidence in myself and i didn't ha i didn't have to talk about it you know like i, I just i knew that i belonged in that space you did. you did from the moment i got in the business you did there was not a question like and so, but I knew enough to know that I didn't know anything. Oh, I like So that. I got a mentor and he got a, a big cut of my check. Right. My first couple years in the business. Right. And that was the most invaluable, I cannot put, I would have, looking back, I would have gave him 50%. Right. Right, of because of what you learned. Because of what I learned in those two to three years. So maybe that that may be a little trick there for you guys. You know, get get a mentor that's in that space that can kind of take you around. Um, but just some takeaways as we wrap up here. Um, again, Bradford preached what I preach all the time: know your market, know know your perfect client, know all of the ins and outs and intricacies of, of what they need, their expectations. Um, and breaking into luxury, it's even more important than normal. You gotta have some money going into luxury. Having a mentor that can kind of take you through the ropes is important. Um, and also starting out, leaning on um, more of a luxury brand may be um, important until you can, can learn to lean on yourself and build out your own brand. Your own personal brand. Um, yeah. And so I would say those are like the main takeaways from this. But like guys, legit, like know what you're doing if you get into luxury because these people have um, high net worth individuals are going to have. <laughs> and you don't want to end up with a lawsuit. No. Like that's the last thing. And because they, they ha sometimes hand out lawsuits like it's candy because they have money to do <laughs> And so. they have expectations. So it's just like don't waste their time. Don't waste their time because then they're going to waste your time. Yeah. And, they, and they got time and money for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to say the least. They are here for it. So, yeah. well, thank you so much for coming on and chatting with me today pleasure. about luxury. It. And now we're going to do a little tour around here. I'll show you guys this cool little penthouse we're in. But until next time, um, if you guys love this content, you want to hear more about it, you want to know how I can help you out with your business, or you want to get in touch with Bradford, uh, you know someone that's looking for a property here in Dallas, Fort Worth, like Bradford's your dude too. He does luxury and regular. It's all just Bradford Kaufman on all my handles. Yeah, so. I was about to say, how do they get in it's, touch with you it's very easy bradford kaufman on instagram bradford kaufman on linkedin whatever you want to do what, whatever you're kaufman. into it's just bradford kaufman. <laughs> so look up bradford kaufman i don't have a cool name like chauncey fam yeah or your instagram <laughs> handle estate chick, estate chick I, don't, I don't have I'm not that cool but 
<laughs> I'm just Bradford Kaufman. But... So go find Bradford. You guys want to follow him. His page is awesome. It's so luxurious. Um, all of his graphics are great. And more importantly, if you guys want to partner with me, you want to know a little bit more about how I can bring value to your business, feel free to book a free call below down at the link. If you're licensed, click the license one unlicensed. Make sure you hit the unlicensed button. And uh, always don't forget the Struggle Bus GPS course in case you guys are starting out and you need some good foundational um, information. So I hear that's a really good course. That's a good course. That's a good course. Mean, Plug that course. Yep. <laughs> but until next time, guys, peace, love, and luxury. See you guys.